the balls on this committee to nix an Alabama Penn State whiteout game. Wow. <laughs> Also, as expected, uh, see, I love this. The SEC, the Overhyped the Georgia Bulldogs, baby. Find out about Carson Beck, who was hurt. They're I'll be taking Gunner advantage. Stockton led them to victory in overtime against Texas yesterday. Yeah, that was a really SEC. great football game. And get those are two of the best teams in college second football. Second into the quarterfinals. Now there are only two more buys left, and a conference champion has to claim each of those two buys, and there are three candidates. Here are the resumes. All right, come on. Boise State from the Mountain there, West, you? Arizona State from the Big uh, This, Clemson to me, honestly, I think it should be Arizona ACC, State. And not it's going to be Boise, Boise Arizona State, earlier, and Clemson, in that order, Clemson in my mind. Oregon. That's how they're going to have it. Do I would do Arizona State, Boise State. I favor Boise State, State, State champions of the Mountain West, 12-1. and one. And to your point, their only loss on the road at Eugene. They had to get a couple of kickoffs to beat them. I think they should be above those other two. I would be stunned if it's not Boise State because Tuesday, when you talk about the gap between Boise State and where Arizona State was and where Clemson was, I'd be stunned if they were able to jump them. Oregon, Georgia, pretty easy. The third seed. Boise. The college football playoff a buy into the quarterfinal. Goes to Boise State. See, now all of a sudden, this changes Strength what we were talking about. Overall, in the all right, so Boise was the four for several weeks. Now they're three. So uh, who do you want to play? But let's see who's fourth first. He's right around 80, but Spencer Danielson's team. Right, watch party nonsense. there. Ashton right, Genty, Heisman Trophy candidate. Take home the biggest prize. Now, one more bye in the quarterfinals remains. It will go to a conference champion, and we're down to Arizona State or Clemson. Who has the final buy? Good. It's Arizona State. And how about that? Arizona State and Boise State. Who would have thought about that? The beginning of the season. Who's going to get buys in the first ever 12-team playoff? Boise State and Arizona State. This is awesome. This is what I love about this. This is great. Now, Arizona State, this is also huge for Arizona State because not only were they at the 12 seed for weeks, but now they get a bye. What's important about that is that's one less game they have to worry about. Now they don't have to win four games, just three. So Arizona State gets the bye. Are we going to see their uh, What a job reaction. Kenny Dillingham, the former Oregon offensive and, coordinator with yep. the potential in the semifinals yeah, yeah. of Good. Oregon. Figured out, but we'll tell you where the bowl games are a little bit later on. And that's what the quarterfinals will be. All right, so let's see. And they rank them down there at 9 and 12. Okay. Bowl games. Just a tremendous reward for winning a, a conference championship, too. Highlighting the opportunity to avoid the first round, make it to the second round automatically, and getting that first round by. But I do want to point out something. Conference championships have been rewarded, but what you have is number one and number two in the rankings with a bye, but you also have number nine and number 12. So it will be Clemson. So let's see where Clemson is. Clemson's 12, which is exactly where Clemson belongs to be. That's exactly where they should be because they would not be in this if they didn't win the ACC championship game, meaning it's, it's, it's where they should be. Now, immediately, this is still the same thing I said the last couple of weeks. You want the five spot. Now you definitely want the five spot. And I believe the five spot should be Penn State. Okay. If anybody who watched those games last night thinks that Texas is better than Penn State, okay, something is clearly wrong also with Quinn Ewer's arm, clearly. Uh, I have no idea why they're not going to Arch, at least for a, a quarter, and just find out what, how their offense would look with them. Because I look at Quinn Ewers, and I'm looking at a third or fourth round quarterback. There aren't, there's no arm strength. They cannot win a national championship with Quinn Ewers playing like this. You want the five seed. The five seed, of course, being the top ranked team. In other words, and uh, that's not a buy. So in other words, if you rank them accordingly, which by the way, Georgia being ranked second, whatever. So go ahead. Like I said, go ahead. 
So who do you think is the third best team? It's got to be Penn State. It better not be Texas, okay? It should be Penn State. But if it's Texas or if it's Penn State, either one of those teams in that five hole, you're going to be feeling pretty good about their chances of getting all the way to the semis. But there would still be work to be done. This is I, I'm going to say this 500 times for the next two weeks. Any of these teams can win any of these games. I even think any of these teams can win multiple games. It's a big difference, though, on how many of these teams can win a championship. Clemson still ranked 16th. So the 16th ranked team in the country is seeded 12th. They get the lowest seed possible in the field. Yeah, and I don't think it matters to Clemson right now. Uh, no, <laughs> like just a few weeks ago, they weren't in this thing, and now they are. And I think they come in this thing excited to just be in. No yeah, please don't show go, that. No matter what they're seated, but let's they're move in on, the please. top 12. So those are the teams who qualified by winning conference championships automatically into the 12-team bracket. Now from here, we have to fill out the rest of the bracket. And remember, the team seated 5 through 8, wherever they're ranked, 5 through 8, gets a home game. So the fifth seed who will play Clemson in the bracket and play them at home is I knew they the would do Texas that. Texas. I Longhorns. knew it. I knew it. I knew it. Texas and Clemson in a first round. I knew it. I knew they would put Texas there. You, you SEC. See, Texas, you're so happy to be in the SEC because you were still in the Big Twelve. This wouldn't be happening. The funny look. Th this is so hilarious. Texas gets no respect in the Big 12. They come over to the SEC. They lose twice to the like the only competent team that they were playing on their schedule in the SEC, and they still get the benefit of the doubt. Never would happen if they were in the Big 12. Game but they got the Austin, SEC logo now. Winner gets Arizona they got, State. They're kiss the SEC's ass. I would imagine – Everybody would take that path right now. That is a very coveted seed. That five seed, the opportunity to play the weakest team in the field, and then come now on, Clemson up against a Big Twelve team. I'll be rooting for you heavy and hard, and I will be rooting for Arizona State. I'm telling you right now, State, Texas is not going into okay. You heard it right weekend. here. You heard it right here. Texas will not make the semifinals. So. Tough game, hard fought game, losing in overtime. Yeah, this is really clapping there. That's really like nice. Being, I mean, against losers, so their value losers. Football. Who has the sixth seed? Of course, it's Penn State. Penn State. So Happy Valley will host a first round. So Penn State's still in in the same position they were that I said that they would probably want to be in, uh, playing Boise State in the, in the next round. Obviously, Arizona State turned out to be that team instead, but. Uh, so that's still okay, even though I, I would have much rather have seen a matchup with Georgia, to tell you the truth. Um, so now the question is going to be, who will their opponent be any tougher than Arizona State? And I don't know. We'll see. Look, I'm really high on on this Arizona State team where they're playing. You know, I think they're I, – I would have loved to have seen, like, Arizona State and South Carolina make it together because those would have been two of the hottest teams in the Power Five. Everybody, you know, look, Oregon, see, or, uh, and, and, and when I, when I say these kinds of things, I'm, I'm putting Oregon by themselves because they're by themselves right now. They proved it last night. They're by themselves. So everyone else from two to 12, all of that is just anybody can beat anybody. And that includes Arizona state. And I think if South Carolina was in there and Arizona state was in there, those would be the two hottest teams, Notre Dame too. Okay. And, and that's why I like Notre Dame as well. But, you know, Penn State got a, got the shaft a little bit. They should be five. But you got to beat who you got to beat anyway, and they'll be okay. A playoff game after James Franklin's team came up a little bit short against Oregon in the Big Ten championship game. And not an objectionable path for Penn State. We'll see who they play. But then the Boise State foe in the quarterfinal, no disrespect to Boise, think you take that probably. Yeah, you know, if you look at Penn State, again, you're valuing losses for Penn State. Yes. You look at the resume, who they beat, not great, but they did play Ohio State. They did play Oregon, lost both those games. Those are two losses. They come in as a six seed. I'm not arguing, but there will be people out there saying, 
who are those 11 wins against? Okay, so you have one home game in Texas. You have one home see what game I'm saying? In see, see, th- this, <clears throat> this is the stats, strength of schedule, analytical part of analysis. And if, and, and, and if anybody is thinking of that, uh, then I'm sorry. Um, that's just not the way to a- a- analyze a team. It's just not. You don't analyze a team by numbers. Now, if you want to say, you know what? I really like this team and I really like this team. And I don't know. I don't know uh, how to differentiate the two. Then I want to bring in the numbers. Well, let's bring in the numbers then. But I'm not going to look at the numbers to decide who I like. That I just I don't I don't understand that way of thinking. I think the, the people who do that, in my opinion, are people who are not watching the games or don't know how to understand what they're watching. If you don't get after watching the SEC championship game last night, followed by the Big Ten championship game last night, who the two better teams were, if you can't get that, sorry, I don't know what to tell you. Okay. So it's, it's like that trick that they did uh, that they used to, that they do every year in college basketball uh, when they look at the resumes and they took off the logos and they show you the stats. Same thing with if you could do that and not and, and show the games without the logos. If you showed the if you showed the teams without the logos and you watched the Georgia Texas game and you didn't have the logos and you had no idea who that was. Same thing with the Penn State Oregon game. You watched them, you had no idea who those teams were, and then someone asked you at the end of the night. Who do you think were the two best teams based on those two games that you saw? They would laugh in your face, wondering why you're even asking that question. State, the seventh seed in the college football playoff. The Fighting Irish of Notre Dame. And on a chilly afternoon or evening in December, beneath Notre the Dame, Golden baby. Dome in the shadow of touchdown G. Yeah, okay, this is nice. Nobody wants to, cares about that. Uh, so, yeah, now this is good because if they would have put Notre Dame in the Oregon quadrant, if that's what that's called, uh, I would have been upset because Notre Dame then has to play Oregon next round. But now Notre Dame gets to play Georgia in the next round. Yes. Yes. So... Mark this down, baby. Mark it down. Texas and Georgia will not be in the semifinals. Mark it down. Seven seed in the first round. The eight seed final home game belongs to Ohio State. So we're going to get an Ohio State-Oregon rematch possible. In the same location, possible. Well, that's going to depend on the psyche of the Ohio State Buckeyes. And what we're down to now is is SMU, Alabama, Indiana. Who else are we down to? There's one more team who we're leaving out. Tennessee. And, of course, we're not even going to mention South Carolina, Miami, Ole Miss. Okay. So, someone is going to be 9, 10, 11. So, 9, 10, 11. Let's see. I'm going to say, who am I going to say? I'm going to say Tennessee is going to be 9. Indiana is going to be 10. I don't know. You know, I think it's easy for me to sit here and go, I told you. Of course, they'll let an Alabama end. I told you. Um, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to say that they're going to they're going to put SMU in. Should I say that? Nah, I don't know. Maybe I shouldn't. Maybe it's Alabama. I'm going to tell you why I'm going to go with Alabama. I guess I am going to say that, but I'm not because I really am conflicted here. So it's not like I told you. I think that. This is just a, a guess, but remember last week I was telling you about how much I, t- I said it on a few other shows about how much I think that the committee has done wrong by, or at least the commissioner saying that 
South Carolina, Miami, Ole Miss, teams like that, Alabama, that were not playing, nothing that happened in the games this weekend could affect them in any way, pro or con. And I talked about how uh, absolutely dumb that was uh, because they're tipping off that they already have a perceived notion, preconceived notion about or idea of what they want, and that's Alabama. And I say that because, and I think this is going to further uh, prove my point, is because let's say, see, I believe South Carolina's resume should have gone up this week, today, after Clemson won the championship. Because South Carolina just went to Clemson last week and beat them on their home floor. Beat them. They beat the ACC championship team. Anyway, let's go ahead and find out who is going to end up with those last spots. Again, I'm going to go ahead and say Alabama. I'm going to go ahead and say Alabama. I'm going to say that they're going to go with, with, with the Crimson Tide. Uh, and uh, and SMU is going to get the shaft. What do I believe? I've said it before, and I think it should be South Carolina. But they're not going to listen to me. So I think they're going to go with Alabama, but I really would not be shocked if they went with SMU. I, I wouldn't, based on the fact that it was a game that was decided, like Fowler said, on a 56-yard field goal as time expired. It's a tough way to eliminate a team that uh, – was already in the buy bracket last week. So they go from the buy bracket to being a completely el eliminated from a 56 yard field goal. So, so I'm, I'm, but I'm going to say Alabama because that's just the way this committee is, but uh, it can go either way. Coming off a disappointment the last time they set foot on the shoe, but the Buckeyes will be at home and they will have that weather advantage, Kirk, as Ryan Day and the Bucks will try to bounce back from the disappointment against Michigan. And again, based on it uh, on the seeds, we're going to say it's going to be Ohio State versus Tennessee. Okay, and then we're going to go uh, Notre Dame and Indiana, which I think was an awesome matchup, regional kind of deal, and uh, Alabama against Penn State. Wow, wow! You th that's the other thing. You think the committee's going to pass on SMU at Penn State instead of Alabama? At Penn State in a whiteout? If they do, boy, do they got some balls. I'll give them that. After the way the Ohio State season ended against Michigan, I don't know if it would have been better for Ohio State to go on the road to get away from their home crowd that will be booing after their third down not converting and the punter comes out booing Ryan Day. Uh, they'll have to rally and have a good start to that game or it could turn sideways with the home crowd, in my opinion. Yeah, Ohio State's going to be at home, and if the Buckeyes can get past the opponent, who we'll see shortly, got the opportunity for the rematch. Tennessee. And what was just a great game in the regular Come season. Come on, man. Big Ten SEC, game, perfect matchup. But rightly pointed out, the Buckeyes have some things to overcome given the way their season ended. So those are the And also, nobody wants to see Indiana and Penn State. Even though they played, even though they haven't played this year, they're in the Big Ten. Nobody wants to see that. So I just think based on the way they're, and look, the committee is never going to admit it. They're never going to admit that, you know, they don't rig the seating to make it look better for better TV or better matchups. They could say with nobody believes them. Okay. No one. And again, if they're smart, it's Alabama, Penn state, and you got sec versus big 10. And then you get Notre Dame against Indiana, which makes a lot of sense because again, it's kind of a nice little regional kind of deal there teams that will be playing at home who has to go on the road and face ohio state as the nine seed the tennessee go. volunteers and big orange really hoping that they were going to get a home game instead they'll travel not too far away and go to columbia and the fact that they, they didn't get a home game i wouldn't be disappointed seeing the way that ohio state had to stop the run we know that tennessee's going to run the football with dylan sampson so all things being equal if you're a job type you got to feel pretty good about going to columbus yeah i think if you're tennessee you probably like the opportunity you like the matchup every team you play is going to be tough but the one area that ohio state has struggled with is along their own offensive line. What is the best part of Tennessee's team? Their defensive front. So I think. All right, and again, in this one, I'm going to go with. Uh, this is the one that I'm. I'm going to go with uh, Indiana and Notre Dame. 
matchup will be fascinating to see if Ohio State's O-line can solidify here before this first round game. Burke? I, Reese, I think it's interesting to look at that next game, right? The winner of that game, we were talking earlier about Texas and Clemson playing Arizona State, that being potentially a covered position. We talked about that all year, that five hole. Look at Tennessee and Ohio State, who they match up with mm -hmm. the winner of that game. That's that's pretty exciting to look at that game. Potential rematch with Oregon and Ohio State or, or Tennessee. You know, guys, you can say all this when, when, you, when the bracket's done. The year. You know, it could be. You know, that maybe we talked about the five seed being coveted. As I look at the way this bracket's unfolding, maybe it's going to be six. Maybe, <laughs> maybe. Maybe, maybe, maybe it's six. Okay, eight, nine games. See, they're saying that if it's SMU, that Penn State might get the best spot if it's SMU and Boise as their top two opponents. But, again, that's the big maybe because I think we all suspect Indiana's going to Notre Dame. Is Ohio State-Tennessee the 7-10 matchup? In South Bend, the Fighting Irish will take on in-state battle. Signetti wanted a home game. I don't think he had much of a case for a home game, but he doesn't have to travel too far. It's the Hoosiers. What a remarkable season. They go out to take on the Irish. You talk about two different teams, Indiana and Notre Dame. Notre Dame with their run game. Riley Leonard also the run game. Love. Dear my love, the running back going against the Indiana team. All right, come on, come on, come on. Everybody's waiting. Come on. They want to throw the ball. They want to play the air. Very good defense, but can then hold up against the run of Notre Dame. In state battle, I don't see that one a lot. Let's go. The years, you know, <laughs> now forced together by this new 12 team bracket, Notre Dame and Indiana winner gets Georgia in the quarterfinals. So, one spot remaining. I think we pretty much know. The two teams it comes down to. They come down to Alabama, which has some rough losses, or SMU, which really doesn't have anything that ugly on its resume. Keep in mind, too, this whole thing about the schedule strength. Um, here's, here's something that's interesting. Does the NFL, when, when they decide who's going to make it, do, do they go by this schedule strength stuff? No, they don't. There's a lot of reasons why, but no, they don't. How many times do you see teams in the NFL, like AFC, NFC, where you go, man, if they were in the AFC, man, I'm the 10th seed in the NFC. If I was in the AFC, I'd be in the playoffs, man. Man, if I was in that division, I'd be in first place, but I'm stuck in fourth place in this division, and I don't even make the playoffs, and that team's winning the division. Does anybody really, really, really care that much in the NFL? Is there really that much complaint about it in the NFL? No, it, 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 it's just not. Especially because, as we said last year, once you get 12 teams, after we've been dealing with four and sometimes two our whole lives, I'm sorry, but yeah, we can have a nice little debate and talk about it like we're doing now and who got the shaft and who didn't, but that's it. As soon as the sun sets and the sun rises on Monday, I don't want to hear about it anymore. It's over. Move on. That's it. That was for, it's sort of like the college basketball tournament. You talk about it that night. You're hot and heavy. Who got who got the shaft and all that stuff. But that's it. Move on. And that's it. That's what we're going to do. We're going to move on. They won't move on. I tell you right now, Alabama has nothing, nothing to feel like they, 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 they got the shaft. Nothing. All you had to do was win out. Okay. Take care of the business on the field. You know what? If you lose to Oklahoma on a last second 56 yard field goal, something fluky happens. Well, all right. You know what? I'm giving the benefit of the doubt. But you got your ass kicked to an Oklahoma team that is just so average. It's like, it's just insane how average they are. SMU, where's you talk about their schedule, but they didn't make up the schedule. Is it their fault? Who they play? Come on. I mean, that's that's totally unfair to SMU and their players. Unfair. They didn't duck anybody. They just played what the teams that they had to play. And and again, it shouldn't it be if you if you put these two teams together on a field to, uh, on a field, and I don't want to hear who you think be favorite, because I'm sure you did that. People would go, oh, I'll about be some point favorite. I don't care about that. Again, what do you think? 
And I think if both teams were playing their best football, I think it would be an excellent football game. I just do. I don't think there's a whole lot separating these two teams. And I don't feel like a wuss for, for not even like giving you an answer because I, I just, that's how I feel. And therefore, if I feel that way, my decision would be to go to SMU. If I feel that way, if I truly felt Alabama, oh yeah, come on, Alabama. See, I can't feel that way about Alabama because of the, look at what they did to Oklahoma. I don't think they were all that impressive against Auburn either, or even some of these other games that they played this year, they weren't overly impressive. So, look, it's just stop thinking about these teams, Georgia, Alabama. Stop thinking about them in 2023 form in 2020. This is just a complete – this is like you blow all that up and you started a new league. It's new in 20 – everything's new about 2024. And what I what I truly feel is that if Alabama played at SMU and they played their best football, it would go down to the wire. But they also don't have anything that – really stands out as a punctuation mark of so then what do you think about the two teams you've seen them play who do you think's better something that uh would put them into the field you see the key wins being louisville and duke hit the tcu whereas alabama has three teams on their here it comes ledger that will be ranked in the top 15 to 20 in these final rankings I think, the biggest, I think the biggest gap right there is the key wins. And I think that's what Coach Saban was talking about. When you look at the key wins for Alabama versus the key wins for SMU, being Louisville, Duke, Pitt, TCU. You can go either way. There is a, a mile apart in having to go through those schedules. I, I know that I'm dragging this up. I want to say this before we get to the end. There's no right answer here. But there are downsides to both answers. The take on Penn State and the final spot in the college football playoff. Who is it? The SMU Mustangs. Hold Good for on. them. Good for them. Not a surprise. Good for them. Like I said, neither, neither would have been a surprise to me, but the balls on this committee to nix an Alabama Penn State whiteout game. Wow. I commend the committee. I, I don't commend it with a lot of stuff, but I'm going to commend them with that decision.